On Wednesday, The Real Deal attended the New York Money Summit, a conference on real estate and the economy hosted by Real Deal columnist Michael Stoller. At the first panel, industry experts discussed the future of downtown real estate, the problems with TARP, and the way people's animal instincts will come out as the recession continues. Here are some of the highlights from the keynote panel. What's happening today in downtown? And that question goes to you, Steve, and to you, Peter. What's happening? You're talking about 10 Hanover, where rents, you know, you said $48. I don't think you're getting it. I don't think apartments are at $48. No, there are too many vacant, you may, but there are too many new units coming up, like 20 Pine, 90 William Street. There are a lot of these unsold apartments over there. What's really happening with rents, and what's really happening with the condo prices? We have, we, don't, we, have, we have, at 10 Hanover, which is a 503 unit building, we have three vacant apartments there. And we have three vacant apartments there because I've got a low basis, I've got a 421G, and I can undercut everybody in the marketplace, and we do get, uh, uh, on a net basis, at least $48 a foot. But we're in the market every single day, aggressively keeping our tenants. Um, I think that the, the, the gap between midtown and downtown rents is widening. These are the same sort of characteristics we saw in the 1990s. Um, so I think it's widening. Uh, but I, you know, it's very challenging down there. It really is. If we, if our, if my basis on 10 Hanover was substantially higher, I built that building. At, I put that building into service. I think it cost me $175 a square foot to do a full, you know, gut renovation of that building. A year and a half ago, that 175 would have cost you 350 in the marketplace. So I've got plenty of people who are competitors of mine who put buildings into service. It cost them $350 a square foot. To, uh, to build their properties. I've got a competitive advantage. I think if you've, got, uh, if you've got basis that's higher, it's even more challenging than it is for me. Peter, what's happening in downtown? You got Merrill Lynch possibly moving up to uh, the Bryant Park? You have Well, AIG. you're not going to the Pennsylvania Hotel anymore, right? <laughs> well, let me break sure. up in the Pennsylvania Hotel. Let me uh, just make sure I say this correctly. Bank of America Merrill Lynch will fit into the footprint that Bank of America currently has in New York City. So that means any footprint that Merrill Lynch formerly had in this city will go away. The, they will consolidate all of their people into the Bank of America locations. Now that doesn't necessarily mean every Bank of America, but the amount of space Bank of America occupied in New York City will not change due to the acquisition, and they will house all the people. They'll do that through layoffs, and they'll do it through alternative work solutions, encouraging people to work home, and changing the size per square foot people use. Uh, that will have a tremendous detriment on the lower Manhattan, because eventually Merrill Lynch will be totally out of the world financial center. You combine that with Goldman Sachs consolidation into their headquarter building, and you know the uncertainty of AIG, and you know the delivery of office space, which I think will be pared down from Silverstein at the, at the World Trade Center. The next few years are going to be extremely challenging. This gentleman had an opportunity to take $567 million talk money, and you didn't take it. Why didn't you take it? And what's your thoughts about this bullshit of bailing out every single company? You know, I want to I want to talk for the Stoll Report. You know. <laughs> Well, I guess uh, the, the headlines that we've been all seeing uh, indicate that uh, TARP has a really bad reputation right now. It's not very clear as to whether or not TARP is being used properly, and whether or not the people who are getting it are the people who should be getting it, but ultimately how they're going to ultimately use it for the benefit of all the people. Let's talk about how tough it is to get financing. You all the guys, how bad? I know you, you were looking to do a deal on 125th Street. You, you stopped construction for the residential component in Queens. How bad is it? Boston had a little problem. What's really happening in the financing market, with the exception of Joe, who's a, the, the sugar daddy over here? Again, speaking honestly, I said this at a panel in December, um, development financing is nearly impossible to get. You have to put up uh, we started trying to get a $700 million loan in Boston on the project, and um, candidly, we did get uh, $400 million after putting up $200 million of credit. So we would have basically had a $200 million loan non-recourse against $500 million 
million plus of equity or guarantees. And we regard our guarantees as good. So um, that the market for financing uh, development is basically shut down. I wouldn't want it to be something who doesn't have our balance sheet trying to get that. So the good news is this there won't be any building except what's coming out now and finished. There won't be any building, I don't think, for years. If you have cash today, there are two main places that I think people are putting it. They're putting it into treasuries or they're putting it into real estate. Treasuries are yielding almost nothing. The 10-year is that 250 now. Um, the the one month short term is, is has been less than one. It kind of is reverting back to the 1800s when you paid the bank to put your gold in their vault. Um, but the problem is that with all the government spending and all the cash that the government is creating, uh, there is going to be significant inflation when we come out of this. When GDP starts to grow again, inflation is going to be significant. That's going to hurt yields on bonds, on treasuries, on everything. You're going to want to own hard assets. I think it's a tremendous case to go out and buy real estate at relatively reasonable yields with a decent spread. one 800 messy Would you agree with many multifamily owners who have spoken to me that rents have dropped? Absolutely. If somebody's telling you the trends didn't drop, they are uh, they don't know really what they're talking. Would you also agree that some multifamily owners, besides dropping rents, are offering additional concessions? It's all as a package because we have properties that are in the Greenwich Village, Chelsea, <coughs> Down West, Upper West Side, Upper East Side, Park Avenue, all over. And I can tell you that all across the board, we reduce rents somewhere between 15 to 25 percent. But you have to remember, and it's calculated concession or everything else. And it's not just that if we have to be honest, and we said we're going to be honest today, it's not that just we decrease the rents, because also after Lehman collapse, what happened, historically, we are in the worst season of the year to end, November, December, January, really, who wants to move? So we have uh, a market that people have uncertainty what's going to be, and I'm afraid. And during that time, not only we reduce the rent, we increase a lot of our expenses. Uh, you used to have in a building 500 tenants with 500 units. They used to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, go to work, never take a shower, work at the equinox, and come home at 11, 12 o'clock at night to sleep. Today, in the same building, we can have 800 tenants because they can't afford the rent, so they are sharing. A lot of them are unemployed, but they're not going to go back to their parents. They are staying still in New York City, so they have roommates. Instead of going to work, they go to the gym, they take showers, they use their apartment, they cook, water. they cook, they eat pasta all day, <laughs> and, 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 yeah, it's a good stock to buy. And in fact, suddenly, instead of having a vacant building, we really have occupied buildings, so the repair and maintenance increased and the expenses increased, absolutely. So, but you have always to remember that in the residential business that is different than the commercial, it's for one year. So we give a concession for one year, and after one year, we hope that the market will change and you are able to increase the rent. I think it's going to be difficult and then people are going to get more depressed, um, and that's going to create the huge buying opportunity, and that's why guys like Mike Vassitelli are keeping their money, um, uh, hoarding their money. There was a great... Um, article you should look at, and I think it was in the journal yesterday by Bob Schiller, who everybody knows is the person who did, who, who does the uh, Case Schiller report, but this one was about people's psychology in environments like this, and it's a great article because um, he called it, um, the term he used was animal instincts, and I think as time goes on, people are going to get more depressed. Um, so I see maybe 2011, 2012. I mean